Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. Amen. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. The Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad. We ask that Brother Josh can lead us in a word of prayer. Amen. If you have a need or desire, just lift your hands unto the Lord. Lord, thank you so much for keeping us this day, Lord, for being our protector, Lord, for being our guide. And we thank you for everything that you have done, for the many ways that you have touched us, Lord God, how you kept our families, Lord, throughout the years. We thank you so much, Lord. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor, Lord God, because only you deserve it, Lord. Lord God, we just want to usher in your presence. We want your anointing to be in here, Lord God. We want to be able to offer up praises to you, Lord God, for you to be able to accept our worship and our praises, Lord God. Lord, continue to strengthen us, continue to strengthen our pastor, continue to strengthen our congregation, Lord God, because we need you, Lord. We need you in this time, Lord God. Lord God, bless the singers, bless the musicians that we usher in your presence, that we are usher in your anointing. Continue to bless us and keep us. Bless the hands that are lifted upon you, Lord God, that whatever their need or desire, that you'll be able to touch it. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. By and by, Lord, when the morning comes, oh, yes, when all the saints of God are gathered home, we will tell the story how we overcome, and we'll understand it better by and by. Oh, 
yes, by and by. That's the sister wonder if we're gonna give us a song, amen.
Amen. Oh, the joy that came to me. Amen. At this time, we ask this the palm is going to give us a selection. Amen.
thing Oh, Lord Cause I love you, Jesus Oh, yes, I do I worship and adore you I just want to tell you And Lord, I love you more than anything. Oh, 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 I love you. Oh, yes, I do, and I worship a man of you. Just want. I love you, Jesus. Amen. I worship and adore you. At this time, we ask Sister Brothers to come lift up the offering. Bye. 
have to go by myself. Oh, said I'm gone if I have to go by myself. And my mother, or my father, or my sister. Myself, amen. And this time we ask Brother Josh if he's going to give us a selection. Thank you. 
Praise God. Amen. Amen. Can't say a word. Amen. Praise God. We thank God for everyone. The pressure we're out tonight and those that are listening in, we do thank God today. Okay, there we are. I want to, you may be seated for a moment. I just want you to, we want to be in prayer for Robert Johnson family. He's passed away today, this afternoon. I think he's telling me he was 80 years old. Uh, and so, by the grace of God, he's been through a sick spell for some years now. But by the grace of God, you'll be in prayer for Robin and the family. Also, uh, Brother Jeremiah Palmer, his oldest brother, I think he was 78. He passed away and uh, be in prayer for the Palmer family. And um, cousin passed away, Squire family, being prayer for that family, the Squire, Bishop Squire and family. Um, I want to pray for Brother David Gillen. He used to work, used to work on the air conditioning for us. He's had a surgery today. Just pray God to touch him. And um, there's many more prayers. My brother John, he's in the hospital. Just pray God to touch him, give him what he's seeking God for, the deliverance that he needs. And um, all those that are on the prayer list, we got several names, and maybe I'm not even mentioning everything that I need to say to you all, but by the grace of God, just just be in prayer. It's day by day. And I, don't forget the Jones family. The, uh, the, the funeral is tomorrow at, at 12 o'clock, and his mother and his niece, and let's just pray for them. In Jesus Christ's name. God bless you. Let us stand. Pray. Glad for Brother Carl and visiting. We're glad for y'all tonight. Amen. Praise God. Let us just bow. Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus Christ tonight, Lord, we come, Lord, to say thank you. Thank you for all these the children of God that are pressed away, that are listening in, Father. Special prayer for Robin to, and, and the family tonight and the Palmer family, God, and different ones, oh God, the Squire family, God, and all the different ones that's had a loss Father, the loved ones, Lord, I just pray, God, that you would strengthen their hearts and comfort them. Lord, the ones that are sick, our brother David Gillen, Lord, and the different ones, oh God, that's going through battling with infirmity, our brother John, Lord, and all those ones on the prayer list, God. Lord, we just pray, God, that you would do something tonight, oh God, with your word, oh God, to draw us closer to you, Lord, that you will open our eyes, Lord, and that we'll see what you want us to see, understand what you want us to understand, to know oh God to know you is life father and we want to know you Lord in the fullness of your word Lord bless the word now move us out of the way God because Lord God if you don't say oh God Lord God just Lord God we don't know what to say but you know what is needed God and I pray God that you'll speak in Jesus name amen as we stand for the reading of the word uh, St. Matthew 17 chapter and 10th verse. St. Matthew 17 and 10. Uh, we had so many out tonight that they had, it's getting to the end of the school year and so much activities going on. So uh, Rachel had school activity and everybody's having school activities, but thank God for you that made it tonight. It says, And his disciples, uh, 17, Matthew 17, 10. It takes, you know, we usually have the screen, but. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then said the strives that Elias must first come? In the 11th verse, he says, And Jesus answered and said unto them that truly, Elias truly shall what? shall first come and what? And restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias is what? Come already. And they knew him not, but have done unto him 
whatsoever they listen. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. May God bless you his word. You may be seated. And we want to go back, he says, in the 11th verse, and we want to deal with the thought, restoring all things. Restoring all things. Praise God. Has it ever been a time, amen, that all things needed to be restored? I believe in this hour, all things has been restored. Praise God. We're not, we're not talking about just things, amen. We're talking about a specific, uh, God is uh, talking about his specific, and we want to show that in a, in a moment. But he said, Elias shall come, and he said, Elias has come already. He's speaking to two issues. Elias truly is going to come and restore all things shall come and restore all things and Elijah has come Elijah, Elijah has come and y'all didn't know him and you did to him whatever you listen so by the grace of God let's see the Elijah that has come at this would take a time and they had let's go to Luke 1 and 17 Luke 1 and 17 you know, when God sends sent Elijah, a lot of times when God, the Bible says in Amos 3, 7, surely the Lord God would do nothing, but he reveals his secrets to his servant, the prophets. Are you with me? So before God does any major thing, God has a way of revealing what he's about to do. Before God brings judgment, he always gives us a warning. God don't bring judgment on a generation without a warning. The Bible said Noah was a preacher of righteousness bringing in the flood, but they didn't listen to Noah. They rejected Noah's message. But God had a way of warning the people before he bought the judgment. Before God, does, before God destroyed Nineveh, he sent Jonah. Jonah came out of the fish belly. And God warned them before he destroyed it. But Nineveh went they fasted and they prayed and they repented. Amen. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. So they came to repentance. And before God does any major thing, he would always send a warning. Amen. Amen. We're talking about what's going on in Russia and Ukraine and all that. Amen. And we know we're approaching and the earth is quaking and, and all these things are happening. Amen. And uh, the, these things that are happening... It's, it's scripture. Amen. So we know amen, Gog and Magog talking about Russia and talking about the battle of Amalekhet. And we're talking about two woes that passed and the third woe coming shortly. We're talking about World War World, World War I and World War II and the third World War would be it. Amen. So we'll run at that. Are you with me? Well, because we had the uh, Babylon, which was the head of gold. You know what I'm saying? And, I, I don't want to give you too much. Let's just let's just take our time. I was thinking about starting back um, Tuesday for those that want to come, a volunteer come, a Bible study. You know what I'm saying? So by the grace of God, and then we'll break things down a little further. But uh, Luke one and seventeen, and as we had our finger on Matthew there. And I'll read Matthew again, and I'll see when I get to Russian and speeding up, and then I, I I might be going too fast for somebody, and my hopefully uh, I don't I don't want to do that, so I'll slow down, and let's go back, let's hold our hands on Luke and Matthew, okay Matthew, he says uh, in the eleventh verse, seventeen and eleven. And Jesus answered, said unto them, Elias truly shall what? First come, right? And what? All, restore all things. Now hold that and go over to Luke 117. And he and he shall go before him in the spirit and the power of Elijah, or Elias. 
to turn the hearts of the what? The hearts of the fathers to the what? Children. Okay? And the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Are you with me? So, now in order to understand that, we go to Malachi 4. See, we're going through a lot of scriptures, but hopefully you, you can keep up with us, okay? In Malachi, it says, at 4 and 5, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the what? Now, in the great and dreadful day, in Revelation 11, there's two prophets come, Moses and Elijah. But before the great, that's the tribulation period, and before the great and dreadful day, we, we, we know the world is going to go through the mark of the beast, the great tribulation period, the Antichrist time. All of that is coming. But before that time come, he said, I will send you, behold, I will send into you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day. It's going to be a terrible day. It's a day of trouble. A time of trouble that we've never seen since it was the world. Are you with me? So that trouble time, the Ukrainians, they're feeling it. And I said, brother, sister, we don't want to feel it in America, but it's got to come. Amen. They are going through their troubled times, and we are praying for them. Amen. But you said it, 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 it won't happen to America. Why not? It won't happen to the, the world. It's going to reel and roll like a drunk man Amen. because of sin. God said in the days of Noah, as it was in the days of Noah, he said in Luke 17, as it was in the days of Noah, and as it was in the days of Lot. So shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Amen. I said, we, we're, we're at this hour. It's an hour that we should become desperate to get closer to God. Amen. Amen. But instead of getting closer to God, it looks like people are getting farther and farther away from God. We want God to help us, but we don't want to repent of our sins. Men don't want to stop doing evil. They don't want to turn and, and, and repent and say, God, forgive us. I'm sorry. Will the nation do that? Will America do that? We're trying to get the abortion issue right. We're trying to get this right. I, I, you know, all of that. But I, 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 I'm just saying, it, all the king horses and all the king men couldn't put Hump the Duck together again. That's old. Y'all might not even know that one. That's when we was in, in elementary school. But... I, it, it's something about trying to put things back together. After we go so far, it's hard to try to put the pieces back together. Are you with me? So men, in order to repent and re get it restored back, so the church has gone through an awful condition, went through the dark ages of history, when the Catholic Church killed 68 million. Are you with me? And that was the dark ages of history. But God promised that I will restore, said the Lord, all the years that the canker worm, palmer worm, locust, the caterpillar, and the eaten, I will restore, said the Lord. Amen. Amen. God promised to restore his church, Amen. though it went through a dark time. Are you with me? Amen. But God promised I will restore, said the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord will restore his people back to how it was in the original church. Amen. 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 To the original word. Back to Pentecost. Amen. Back to the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Back to signs and wonders. Amen. Back to miracles. Amen. 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 Back to where the people wanted to be Christians. Amen. Amen. To love the Lord thy God with all our heart. Amen. Are you with me? When you're in love with God. Amen. 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 You love his word. Amen. So he says. And the sixth verse, Malachi 4, he said, And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the what? Children, and the hearts of the disobedient, and the hearts of the children to their fathers. Excuse me. And, uh, and he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. That was John the Baptist's ministry. Are you with me? And the hearts of the children to their fathers. 
Now, John the Baptist came to get those Orthodox Jews' hearts turned that they can receive Jesus Christ. Are you with me? But at the end, at the time of restitution, at the end time, it's Elijah was to come to turn the children back into what the fathers had established. He said, upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Praise God. It's all the mix up and all the chaos and confusion with the, what is a Christian, who is a Christian and all of that. And people got all types of Bibles, all types of denomination, all types of creeds and dogmas of men. But God wants us to be turned back to the word. God in simplicity, Amen. not theology, but back to the word. Amen. Amen. Theology would never reveal the word. God said, when the Holy Ghost come, he'll teach you all things. Amen. 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 Without the Holy Ghost, the teacher is not there. You'll never be able to understand the things of God except you have the spirit of God. Amen. And they that are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Amen. Are you with me? So we need the spirit. Amen. Without the spirit, we won't understand it. The Bible is a sealed book. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So you won't, amen. The theology would never teach it to you. It takes the Holy Ghost to reveal Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus said, uh, when Nicodemus said, Rabbi, we know that thou teacher that come from God because no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. And Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see. In other words, he cannot understand the kingdom of God. Amen. How can he see the kingdom of God, amen, if he's not born again? Amen. amen. He, he said, can a man in a second time into his mother's womb and be born? You know, it's too late. But he said, except a man is born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. Are you with me? So it takes a born again experience. Amen. Are you with me? Not just believing. Amen. We can believe, but we got to keep on believing. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We just can't stop till I accept Jesus as my person to save you, and I stop there. You got to keep on. Praise God. You've got to keep going. Justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Justified, then sanctified, cleaned up, and then filled with the Spirit. Amen. 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 Now that's three stages to the birth. The water breaks, then the blood, the baby, then the life. Amen. Are you with me? So you must be born again. Amen. Oh. Amen. Water, blood, and Spirit. Okay. Are y'all with me? Oh. God is good, amen? amen? I'm running for my life. Amen. But, Lord's will, let's go back to, there must be an absolute. There must be, if God's going to judge uh, this earth, if God's going to judge the world, he's got to judge them by something. Amen. Will he judge them by this church, that church, this preacher, that preacher, or what he's going to judge us by. I said one day, amen, the book will be open. As I said, our, we got to, you know, get our direction. We got to have our road map, amen, and we got to have something, the book, it, the, the judge has law books, and he's going to judge you by what's in the law books. Are you with me? But this is uh, the book that God's going to judge every man by. He's going to open the word and says, did you, you know, here's the book. Are you with me? Did you keep my word? You said, well, I didn't understand it. Now, who's responsible for that? Amen. God said, faith come by hearing and hearing come by the word of God. And how can he preach except he be sent? How, amen. 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 And God sent a preacher. He's going to preach God's word. Amen. Are you with me? He can't preach what the church, see, that's what was wrong. Folks were saying what the church said. They were saying what, what they learned in school and all of that. 
But what about the Bible? Don't let nothing ha have preeminence over the word of God. The word must be your absolute. Amen. So uh, back to Luke 1 here, and it says in Malachi 4, it was two things that turned the hearts of the children to the fathers and the hearts of the children to the fathers. And Luke 1 and 17, John the Baptist's ministry was to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. You remember? And the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. John came to prepare. He said, I'm the voice. Of, they said, that's John. Who are you? Are you lost? He said, I'm not. They said, who are you? You know, John said, I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness preparing the way of the Lord. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. Jesus said, if you can receive it, John was the last. Are you with me? Amen. So by the grace of God, it, it seemed to be somewhat confusing. Because John knew that the people at that time thought that he was the Elijah to restore all things. So John told them, I'm not Elijah. But John, right here, Zechariah began to prophesy and tell you that John was Elijah. Jesus said John was Elijah. But John said, I'm not because he knew. You remember that Jesus' own disciples said after he rose from the dead, they asked Jesus in Acts 1, Master, will thou at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? See what I'm saying? Are you understanding me? They thought that we had come to the kingdom age and God was getting ready, amen, because they were under Roman rule. God was going to give, amen, what Ezekiel saw concerning the dry bones and the bones living again. And Jerusalem being turned back to the Jews. The Jews still looking for that. Praise God. Will you restore all things? Is this the kingdom age? Praise God. It was not the kingdom age yet. Are you coming as son of David or son of man? Amen. They didn't understand that. Lord have mercy. I'm saying this is the hour that we're saying some strange things if you it's new to your ears, but by the grace of God, I want you to understand God is going to judge. If you don't understand nothing else, he's going to judge every man by this word. Amen. And God, Amen. in this last day, promised to restore the word. Amen. The Bible. Amen. You said, well, everybody got the Bible. But he said, I would that you all speak the what? Same same thing. Amen. That there be no division among Amen. you. Are you with me? Amen. So what happened? It was it was very it, it was needful that in that day that they speak the same thing. Amen. They are not supposed to be somebody preaching this over here and somebody preaching that over there. We're all going to the same heaven and all of that. How can it be that God of Jesus said what? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but by me. Isn't that right? So Jesus is the way. The Bible said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And he said, and the Word was made flesh. Are you with me? And that was Jesus. He was the word that was in the beginning. He said, before Abraham was, I am. Amen. Aren't you glad that, amen, praise God, amen. that we got the word, amen. amen. Praise God, don't, I mean, the, pre, the preacher's all right, the church is all right, but I want the word. Amen. I thank God for the preacher, I thank God for the church, but, oh, hallelujah, your anchor holds in this word. Amen. Jesus said, except a man abide in me and my word abide in me. Amen. Amen. You got to abide in him. Amen. Amen. Praise God. God is good. Amen. Now, in uh, 2 Thessalonians, and I'm going to be real short now. So you got questions, comments. I'll be glad to get with you. But uh, I'm, it's just uh, 
uh, somewhat of a, a, a prelude of some lessons that we probably have soon, coming soon. Um, Second Thessalonians 2. It says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in what? All be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as the day of Christ is I believe it's closer now. Amen. That's 2,000 years, over 2,000 years ago, but I believe that the, the coming of the Lord is at hand. Amen. 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 If God get us out of here it's before the great tribulation, before the mark of the beast, before the Antichrist, and get us out of here in the rapture before the, the world is, the nuclear bombs are let loose, God get us out of here. Don't you want to go? Amen. You don't want to be left around here with all of that chaos. Isn't that right? You want to be gone. How are you going to go? The Bible said, and we shall be changed in the moment of a what? Twinkling of an eye. Amen. That's going to be a rapture. We're going to be changed. Amen. Amen. We're looking for Jesus to come. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Amen. Amen. The Lord coming back with a shout. With the voice of an archangel. God coming back for his people. The ones that love him, the ones that give their life to him, the ones that say, God, I, I, I love you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you love Jesus, you love his word. Amen. And Jesus is coming back for his children. Amen. Praise God. But will we be ready to meet him? Amen. And that's what it's all about. God, is, I mean, it's, it's, it's not a uh, mystified or something. It's something that's real. Amen. Jesus is real. Amen. He loves us, and he's coming back for those that love him. Amen. Are you with me? He won't leave nobody behind. He's not going to forget you Amen. because he knows each and every one. The Bible says, nevertheless, the foundation of God has to stand as sure, having this seal, the Lord knows them that he is. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. And don't you think God don't know you? God know your thoughts. God know what you're thinking. God know what you've been through. God knows what you're going through. And God said, amen, he cares about you. Amen. Praise God. Don't you know that God won't make no mistake? Amen. amen. God won't leave you behind if you want to go with him. Amen. If your desire is to be raptured out of here before amen, the bombs fall, then God knows your desire. So God will make a way for you. Amen. And you say, God, I don't want to be left behind. And you mean that with all your heart, then Amen. God will make a way. He'll provide a way for you. Amen. But you, you got others that don't, they don't come to that place in their life. They don't never come to those moments, those tender moments. Amen. But you are concerned about, amen, this world and the status of the world and what, just what, what where am I? Where, as an individual, my life, Lord, I don't want to be here when all of this is going on. I want to be caught up to meet you. I want to be in the rapture. Amen. Lord, I want Amen. you. I love you, Lord. Don't leave me in this. Amen. Oh, you know, you, you can't understand it with what's going on now. All this trouble and viruses and all kind of things. Just think how it would be. The Bible said only he did not let, will he let, till he be taken out of the way. What happens when the Holy Ghost is lifted off the earth and it's just chaotic? Praise God. You think you can walk the streets? You think, oh, God, it, it's going to be terrible. Amen. Schoolhouses, the, everywhere you turn, people are just, you know, mass shootings, killings, all of that. What kind of world will we live in if Jesus don't hurry up and come? Amen. What You don't want him to hurry up and come and you're not ready to go. Amen. You said, take your time, Lord. Wait a minute. I got to get some things right. Don't hurry, but wait, wait. And see, I, I believe God is waiting just for that opportunity because he knows, amen, that you're not ready. So he's waiting on that last one, amen, amen that he saw before the foundation of the world. Amen. God foreknew you. He predestinated you to the adoption of sons. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. So God knew that you would come to it when you hear it. 
Amen. Because it might be an uncertain sound to somebody, but it's a certain sound. You know, amen, the Bible said, my sheep know my voice. And a stranger, they will not follow. They know when they hear, amen, God's voice. You know, it's not the preacher on the pulpit. It's the voice of the Lord when he speaks down in you. That's the voice you listen to. The preacher on the pulpit, if you follow the man, you get you in a lot of trouble. Amen. But that voice, and once you learn the voice of God, that God can still speak, amen, it might be, you know, it speaks to you, and you hear that little tender voice of God speaking to your heart. You hear something down in the inside, and that desire, it's always leading you to the truth, always leading you to the, do the right thing, and to live the right kind of life, and to love the Lord, amen, to love his word. That voice, you listen to that voice. Amen, praise God. You'll never be led wrong. If you listen to him. Amen. amen. It's a lot of people. Amen. If it was possible, he had to show in the days of no flesh would be saved. Uh, he, he said if it was possible, he deceived even the very elect. Amen. But God had to show in the days for the elect's sake. Amen. Are you with me? Oh, God. Hmm. I said, uh, I had those brothers from Romania. I said, I said, am I going too fast? They said, no, no, you can go. But here we are, uh, Second Thessalonians, the third, um, the third verse. He says, let no man deceive you by any means. That's what I'm saying. You got to check the preacher out. Amen. Don't just fall in love with people that you think are more intelligent than you, know more than you. And um, they've been trained better than you. You know, sometimes you had to get a second opinion on the doctor. Sometimes you had to get a third and fourth opinion. Are you with me? You just can't just, uh oh, he said you need an operation or you need this. And you say, well, uh, thank you, doctor. When you want to do it, <laughs> Lord have mercy. Sometimes you just better check it out. They say, well, uh, you know, especially if it's a serious operation, you might want to get a second opinion. Are you with me? Amen. And then you want to know the credentials. Is this the best that I can get? Because when it's a matter of life and death, I want the best that I can get. Amen. Even if I have to travel, I want the best. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. If it's concerning my life, then I want the best. I don't, don't give me somebody just fresh out of college you know, or whatever, never done it before, you know, experiment on me. Some intern or some, you know, give me somebody that got some experience. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. So don't trust your soul just because, oh, 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 yeah. But trust the voice of God because that's the voice, that inner voice that will lead you and guide you. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And you know it's not to preach it's not, it's, it's, it's the voice of God speaking down inside of you, leading you in the right path because it's the same voice. When you're a child, until you don't do that. <laughs> he said, ah, who is that? You know, if it's him. Checking you. Some folks don't seem like they got that. They, they don't, they're, they're not, never checked. They just do anything and look like they no, nothing inside of them, no conscience at all, just do anything. But you, you're special, you know. You can't do it. I said, come on, let's do it. He said, oh, I don't know about that. Even though you got by with God allowed you to get, but it was always something there to check you. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. And you wonder, uh, is it not with them? They don't, nothing t tell y'all that's wrong. You know what I'm saying? But something telling you, this is wrong, this is wrong, don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Even when, so you look back and you say, what was that? Now when you're getting a little older and you realize he was there all the time. God was there all the time. Amen. It, just, it just came a time that you recognized it was him Amen. all the time. Are you with me? I don't know why I'm saying those things, but God knows. He says, let no man deceive you by any means. That's what I'm saying. I know some people now and somebody in here they're troubled because 
It's very intense. I don't want to be deceived. I don't want to be deceived. He said, let no man deceive you. Amen. The Bible said the word of God is quick, powerful, sharpening it to his sword. It can discern the thoughts and the tents of the heart. Amen. Don't you know when God's speaking, he knows exactly where you are? Amen. He knows exactly what you're thinking and what you're going through. And he knows exactly how to let you know whether it's him or not. You know, somebody said, nobody knew that, but I didn't even speak it out loud. I just thought it. There was just something going on with me, but God knew it. Isn't that right? Amen. And God knew it was a time and a season that he's going to, you know, don't be afraid. He always said, fear not. It is I. Isn't that right? Amen. You don't have to fear God when God is speaking. Okay, he says, let no man deceive you, for that day shall not come except there become a what? A falling away first, and that man of sin be what? Revealed. I'm going to tell you something. It's not a falling away from the church. Because, uh, I'm going to tell you, uh, people are going to church, and it's a falling away from the word. The people are falling away from the word of God. Church is more about entertainment. You know, who's got the best entertainment? And young people are falling for entertainment, not for the word. Amen. I said, I remember when we were excited as young people and the college, the, the, most of the college campus was going through revival and uh, you know, I'm talking about 40 something years ago. Everybody excited, excited. And it was scripturally. They were excited by what the Bible was saying. And I said, Where's that excitement where we were sharing? Look what God said here. Look what God said there. Hey, hey, hey. And everybody excited with the scripture, just on fire with scripture. You know, what you got today? I got this one. This is what the Lord said. This is. You know, excitement, young people, you know, just learning how, you know, to apply the word, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. I'm talking, where's our excitement? Have you fallen in love with God? He, because the Bible said the word is God. When you fall in love with the word, means something. God opened that up to you. It speaks to you through the word, and the word speaks back to you. He said, thank you, Lord. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for speaking to me. Thank you for talking to me. You know? And that's what it's all about. You learn that relationship you have with God. You're learning to, you know, to know him, you know, and, and to love him. Amen. And when you got that going, you got revival Amen. among the youth. But now the youth having revival, or, you know, let's go skating, let's go fishing, let's, I ain't go do something, all kind of stuff. Let's go canoeing, let's go to the mountain, let's go ski, let's go. That's a revival. But it was, a, it, was a, it was for souls back in the day. That was excitement. We going about souls. We trying to get somebody in the kingdom. Yeah. Amen. It was about that. And we had a little, you know, picnics and stuff every now and then. But the main emphasis was on the word and souls. Are you with me? But I think uh, the main emphasis is on, you know, trying to, you know, get you occupied. And, and you know, but let's not let's not leave with God out the picture, the word out the picture. Are you with me? If what was working, if, the, if it's working today, then why is all this chaos in the school? I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, it worked with us as youth. People come off of, out of the games, they came off the streets, they came out of prostitution, they came out of this. I mean, I, mean, I know it's happening now. But I'm talking about it was young people revival on fire for God with the word. Are you with me? They still got some. Still got some. But I, I, I just don't. 
uh, Lord have mercy. I don't want to be critical, but because I don't want to, I don't want to seem indifferent. But brother and sister, I believe there's a life that you got to live. Amen. As a Christian, Amen. it takes a life. Amen. I believe you'll see Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ again walking around in human flesh. Father, make them one even as we are one. Amen. I and you and you and me, that we all might be one. Are you with me? Amen. And that's what it's all about, brother. That's what it's about, sister. One more scripture and then I'm going to close. Uh, I, th I thought I'd be shorter than this, but y'all part me for a moment. Galatians 1. The authority is not God's word no more. They're made what the church say, what the preachers say, the authority. But the authority is the word of God. God restoring us back to the word. I restore all things. Back to what the apostles preached, back to what Peter, Paul, John, back to the Bible. Amen. Back to Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, number. Back to the word. Amen. Amen. Back to truth. Amen. Back to God. Amen. It says in Galatians 1 and 6, it says, I marvel that you're so soon removed. There'll be a great fall in the way. He said, I marvel that you're so soon removed from him that I call you unto the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there'll be some that what? That trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, an angel from heaven, Preach any other gospel than that which we preach unto you. Let him be a curse. As we said before, so say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be a what? A curse. That's not another gospel. It's the same Bible. The same word of God. That's what restoring back to the Bible. Amen. Well, you can look in this book and find life. Amen. Amen. You can find God. Amen. Because he's revealed in his own word. Amen. Amen. You got something that you can live by. Somebody that you can trust. And this is the, whole, the Holy Bible. You say, well, which one? We got so many different translations. Go back to the old time religion. Amen. It worked. Are you with me? Don't, you don't have to get all confused up. Go back to the old time away. Ask grandmama what kind of Bible she had. Ask granddaddy what kind of Bible he had. Praise God. Ask somebody that's old time religion. Ask them what they had. They didn't have one. Are you with me? Amen. You can't, nobody can understand it. No, without the spirit of God, you never understand it. It takes the Holy Ghost to understand it. Amen. Are you with me? Let us just bow our heads. Father, in the precious name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we love you, we appreciate you, we thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. God, you promise not the church is going to restore all things, but Lord, I believe that you, in the time of restitution to come, you send forth Jesus, and he shall Restore all things. Lord, I believe Jesus Christ has come again in broad form. And I believe, God, you've been working the work. Send Elijah to restore all things. Father, I believe the hour that we're living in, God. It's a need, Lord, for your people, oh God, to stand on their feet. Stand for righteousness. Stand for holiness. 
Stand for you, Jesus. As our heads are bound, our hearts are looking to him. As God spoke to your heart. Have you surrendered your life to Jesus Christ? Or maybe you thought about it. Stop thinking about it. Do something about it. Time is winding up. Will you serve the Lord Jesus? Will you give your heart to Jesus? He gave his life for you. Do you want to give your life to Jesus? As your heads are bowed, hearts are looking to him. Is that one that want to give your heart to Jesus? Say, so Brother Simmons, pray for me. I want to give my life to Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jesus, come into my life. Jesus Christ, I need you now. Come into my heart, Lord. I want to serve you. I want to live for you. I ask you to forgive me, Lord. I want to do the right thing. I want to go in the right place. Lord, I want to go with you when you come back. I don't want to be left behind, God. Help me, Lord. Strengthen me as I surrender to you, Lord. Have your way in my life. In Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for these that have lifted their hands and opened their hearts. Let's just lift our hands to him and just tell him thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you. We'll let Brother Carl come and close us in his own way and introduce us. Amen. Appreciate the Lord tonight. Amen. God is good. Amen. My co-worker, Saheed, and his wife, he's one of the engineers at the job. Amen. Came to the main office and uh, was talking with Bill and him and I felt the presence of God came in and Bill said, would you just pray with me and Saheed? And it was God's mercy. I felt the anointing in the, in the room and remember them in your prayers. I gave Tamika his name and everything. They put him on their prayer list. They dealing with a situation, but I believe it's already taken care of. I believe God has already taken care of it. 
Amen. Where the children of the Lord is, there's liberty. The captive are set free. The broken heart is healed. Amen. I told Saheed, I said, you, you, you can come on to church with me. I believe in the presence of that anointing. I believe God will do something. And I believe God done something tonight. That their faith may recognize he wasn't in the presence of a man, but the son of man. And he'll do what you ask. Amen. I thank the Lord for him. And he said, we're Christians. You know, I can't hardly pronounce his name. And he said, Brother Carl, we're Christians. We live a Christian life. I said, well, just come on to church with me. My uncle's a pastor. I said, God will bless you. Amen. I, I would, if you want to say something, and Amen. 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 God is good. I said, God always let me run into these people. Amen. Y'all remember us in your prayers. One of the guys we're dealing with, his wife texts me. It's a family lady in Blythewood. She want to be baptized in Jesus' name. She want to have Bible study. And y'all just remember us in your prayers because the prayers of the righteous availeth much. As Pastor Simmons said, people are going through a lot. And if you turn to Jesus, he'll fix it all for you. No matter what we go through, it's all worth it for the kingdom. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you tonight for the word. We thank you tonight for the sermon of God tonight, the servant of God. Continue to bless your people, Saheed and his family, Lord. Move by your spirit tonight. Continue to bring your people in, God. No matter what they go through, Lord, keep them on that right track. We love you tonight. We appreciate you tonight. God, move by your spirit, move by your word. As we leave this place, but never your presence, go with us, Lord, until we meet again. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Let the church say amen.